Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm gonna go through everything that I took with me on my recent trip. Uh, talk about some of the gear, show you how I load my pack, and uh, talk about the weights of some of this stuff. I'll also go over stuff that worked well, stuff that didn't. Favorite things, which are probably pretty obvious, given the video if you saw it of our trip to Spruce Knob. So uh, get going here, starting with the Ula Circuit pack. Uh, this thing is wonderful. I can't say enough good about it. Uh, so look it up if you haven't heard about them. It's becoming more popular. Uh, great company to deal with. Awesome product. And this pack comes in at 41 ounces, which translates to about 2.01 pounds. And within the pack, to keep everything dry, the first thing I have is the trash compactor bag. Popular option. Uh, again, this one has been on several trips with me, and the, I've had to do one repair with some duct tape on it. Otherwise, it's uh, held up really well. And this thing weighs in at 0.7 ounces, so again, it's not much. I just open up the pack, stuff the compactor bag inside. Nice and easy. Uh, the first thing that goes in the backpack in the bottom is my quilt. This is a sort of more modern military sleeping bag cut down with the edges stitched up to just make a top quilt. Uh, it works pretty well. I've had it down into the 20s, no problem. Uh, it's not super light. It comes in at 2 pounds, 0.7 ounces. Uh, there are lighter options for now. This works. Uh, very economical. Just stuff it down into the bottom of the pack, like so. Gives it some space, fills it out nicely. The next thing that goes in my pack is actually my clothes bag for my spare clothes, camp clothes, all of that stuff. I'm using the Sea to Summit Cordura bag in a 15 liter size. It's a little bit bigger than I need. But this actually functions as my pillow as well. Uh, with the spare clothes in it, and this bag on its own is one ounce altogether. Now, within this goes spare pair of socks. This time I actually took two pair with me, uh, two spares and a pair of camp socks, which are pictured here. So these guys end up weighing 1.5 or 1.3 ounces for the two pair that I actually took with me. And then the camp socks here, which are the mid-weight merino wool socks, come in at 3.5 ounces. Also within the clothes bag, I had these generic, they're like Russell brand long underwear. I did end up wearing these the second day. And I also carry a pair of boxers in this bag, clean boxers. Now, I've been using cotton boxers, which I'm sure makes a lot of people cringe. And actually on this trip, I learned why not to do that. Uh, we got soaking wet and my, my shorts dried quickly, even with the long underwear underneath. The part that didn't was this perfect outline of where the boxers came to, so I will actually be switching that up after this trip. Lesson learned. So it goes. Uh, next thing that goes in is my tarp, Kelty Noah 12 tarp with the figure nines and M steel. Uh, it's all nice and packed up all small. Uh, this guy comes in at two pounds, 20 ounces, with all the suspension, the ridge line attached and everything. After that, you know, double nest with the whoopee sling suspension and the webbing all in the one bag with the compression straps removed. And that all together comes in at one pound, 5.5 ounces. After that is my cook kit, uh, homemade alcohol stove, the aluminum lid, cut up Red Bull container for 
windscreen, and I tend to carry two of these little bottles for alcohol. These were actually five-hour energy bottles. I carried the denatured alcohol in there. Uh, it's about 1.95 ounces of alcohol each, and the the aluminum cup that I'm using, I have no idea what brand it is. Uh, it's 3.2 ounces. The alcohol bottles are 0.3 ounces each, and then my stove is 0.8 ounces, and the windscreen and spare aluminum and everything together is 0.4 ounces. And I get that nice and stuffed down in there, and then I roll over the bag. It's everything that goes within the compactor bag. Now, on top of the compactor bag inside my pack goes my food bag, which this is the REI brand di dry sack. It's 10 liters, holds up well so far. Got rained on a lot this trip, hanging in the tree and stuff, and everything stayed nice and dry. Inside that is the cord and the beaner that I used to hang it. And this bag comes in at 2.3 ounces. Uh, the line which I will be upgrading to something lighter, but right now that ball of line comes in at 3.5 ounces. And then the little beaner that I use to, uh, to hang it up is 0.2 ounces. That's it for the main body of the sack. Roll it down. Nice and tight. have it. I have on one side, I carry my wet wipes, toilet paper without the paper tubes, and my little kit with allergy pills and ibuprofen. And then I'll also keep snacks and things in that pocket. And that goes in the left hip pocket here. The bag of wipes comes in at 1.6 ounces, toothbrush sack with toothpaste and bag is 1.4 ounces, and then my little meds bag comes in at 0.3, toilet paper is 0.6 ounces. The other side, with the hip belt pocket, uh, is where all of my electronics live. So within there we have the tripod and the sometimes the camera that I'm using to film now. Uh, I also carry the iPhone cable and the cable to charge the camera that I'm currently using. And the cable to charge the camera comes in at 0.6 ounces. Along with those goes the cheapy charge pack pocket juice brand from Walmart. And this charge pack comes in at four ounces. A headlamp, the Black Diamond Cosmo. Uh, they don't make this particular model anymore. Uh, it serves me well, works all right, does exactly what it's supposed to do. The batteries have been lasting for quite a while, but I do carry spares just in case I need them, and this guy is 3.3 .3 ounces. Also in that pocket, goes my Fujifilm XP camera, which I use mostly for still photos. Uh, it doesn't, it takes okay pictures. It's definitely not the best, but uh, its durability has held up. I've had this for a few years now, and uh, it does great as far as not dying and, again, taking okay pictures. Uh, this camera weighs 5.8 ounces. And I have the case for the camera I'm currently using. Uh, you'll notice this in the videos when the audio is terrible. Uh, again, waterproof. It's kind of important when I'm out there, especially in the rain, walking across creeks and stuff like that. And this case weighs 3.7 ounces. Now, uh, moving on to the front mesh section of the pack, I carry a spare bag or in this case two, uh, it's about 0.1 ounces for that. I have the 
toothbrush and toothpaste, which are actually not in the side pocket. Uh, don't know why I said they were. These things go in here. Uh, this time around, I took an emergency space blanket as a ground sheet. This is something that I'm not going to do again, uh, but I included it because I did use it on this trip. It worked all right while it was on the ground, but the problem was, after the first use, when we went to fold it back up, uh, the one that I was using, which is pictured here, uh, is it, it ended up getting a small tear in the edge of it, and once that happens with this material, it just rips apart into pieces. So I will be upgrading to something else for a ground sheet. The space blanket weighed 1.9 ounces. Also in the front pocket goes my spoon, cheap plastic REI long-handled spoon. Uh, has served me well. And that spoon comes in at 0.3 ounces, so it is nice and light. Now, something that I tend to overlook and not think about with base weight, but I do carry my car keys in my pack because it's kind of important to be able to leave. And my keys actually weigh 3.9 ounces. Also in the front of the pack, I have my sort of goodie bag. This has a spare lighter. This has the film bottle with the dryer lint wax and petroleum jelly mix, another film bottle that has strike on anything matches, along with some, uh, some cotton that has a light coating of petroleum jelly, uh, another fire starter with the flint and steel, and then the spare batteries for my headlamp. This bag weighs 3.3 ounces. The last item that goes in the front of my pack is my tent stakes in a freezer bag, uh, and this now also includes a figure nine, uh, which I used to hold the tarp up in sort of a porch sitting position with the guy lines, but this plus the guy lines comes in at 5.7 ounces, and the figure nine that is in there is 0.4 ounces. On top of that is my Thermarest Z-Lite Soul sleeping pad. Uh, this was my first time going out with a sleeping pad in a hammock. Uh, I was using a homemade underquilt. It uh, was cut down and sewn together out of like an old 1970s mountain sleeping bag from the military surplus store. It was feather filled, not down mind you, feather. And the thing weighed about five pounds, and it didn't compress very well. It took up a lot of my pack space. It did work. Uh, it kept me very warm down into the 20s with no problem. Um, it was also kind of cumbersome to set up, so I decided to give a sleeping pad a try. And one thing I will say, the, the restrictions of the sleeping pad in the hammock were... It was more restrictive. I couldn't move around as freely. I had to make sure I stayed on the pad. Uh, as far as the pad sliding around, I've heard a lot of people talk about that happening. And I didn't have a problem with that at all. Uh, the pad stayed put really well. I just, you, I couldn't adjust it once it was in there, actually. It clung so well to the hammock. Uh, but anyway, I found this to actually be an indispensable piece of gear. Even if or when I go back to an underquilt, I will still carry probably a cut-down version of this. Because having a warm, dry spot to sit and kneel and everything else so readily available, it was priceless. It was amazing. Uh, can't speak highly enough about this and all of the things that can be done with it. Now uh, this guy just straps right onto the front of the pack like so. This also works well to uh, give a nice stand on the front of the pack, makes it much easier to stand it up when I'm getting in and out of it and such. I did start when I first got this, I was packing it inside the pack and it fit just fine. Problem was getting it out and back in was a bit of a pain and required me pulling everything else out and I just discovered that I was using it so much that it was better to just have it on the outside of the pack. Moving on to the side pouches here. If I'm not wearing my rain jacket, oh yeah, and the sleeping pad by the way is 10.8 ounces. It was only supposed to be 10. I don't know what's up with that, but a uh, Marmot Ion rain shirt, rain jacket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's lightweight. It has 
vents at the neck and in the pits that can't be closed. Um, I, I didn't even really notice when I was being poured on by rain. It was, I mean, it's great so far. I'm sure that the coating will eventually fail and water will start soaking through more readily, but as of right now, it's relatively waterproof. It cuts the wind really well. It's light. It's comfortable. Uh, I love this jacket as it stands. And if I'm not wearing it, which I usually was, it would live inside the side pocket. Another thing that goes in the side pocket on that side is my knife. Uh, this is heavy and large and overkill for most circumstances. Uh, it was handmade. I don't, I don't know how old it is or what the full history of this knife is, uh, but I carry it with me. I've used it to sort of feather wood for kindling and stuff so far. I could use it to lance pieces of wood as well if need be, though I haven't had to do that yet. And honestly, it hasn't been super useful, but it, it makes me feel better having it. Uh, just sort of a comfort item, I guess. And I do have it in a homemade sort of holster out of paper here because the leather one that it originally had ended up dying. And on those two items, the rain jacket is 4.9 ounces and that knife is 7.2 ounces. Moving over to the other side pocket here, I have my new favorite items, the Catula Micro Spikes. These things were amazing. Again, if you watch the video, you'll see how much I used them. So I did carry them at the beginning of the trip, but then ended up wearing them for the rest of the time. So uh, I'll sort of go by maximum weight here, but these guys each are 5.9 ounces. And if I wasn't wearing them, I simply balled them up and stashed them in the side here. Now, when temperatures were above freezing, I carried my filter, and I do have a bag, which would live in here. Uh, the filter would also stash in the side pocket if temperatures were above freezing. Otherwise, I carried them in my pants pocket just to keep them close to my body and keep it from freezing. The filter itself, after use probably with some residual water and stuff, is 1.7 ounces, and the bag for it, the 16-ounce bag that came with it, is 0.7 ounces. I also do carry the straw in the front mesh compartment. I forgot about that. Uh, the straw weighs not even a tenth of an ounce. It was negligible, so didn't really count it toward the weight. Uh, so there's the filter. Uh, my water bottles, I actually carried two of these. One of them would get clipped to the front and be easily accessible. These awesome water bottle holders, like so. I actually took these off when I first got the pack because I thought it seemed like a stupid idea. But then I quickly realized that getting to the water bottles in these side pockets was way more difficult than I thought it would be. And this is just super convenient. Uh, it's great. And I actually carried two of these. The one with the duct tape weighs 1.5 ounces, and without the duct tape, these guys came in at 1.3. So, and the other one lived in the side pocket when I wasn't using it. My iPhone 4, this was actually usually in my pocket. Uh, sometimes it would go in the pack, so I figured, uh, figured I would go ahead and count it toward my base weight, and this phone weighs 5.9 ounces. I actually use this for the GPS tracking. I have a free app and stuff. Uh, I use Rambler if you're interested, and that's pretty much why I have it and the charge cables, just for GPS stuff. There's also an app, an amazing app called Maplets, that has this huge resource of all the national forest and state park and state forest and all of those maps in its database, so you can download them. Sometimes they're a little outdated, but it will actually show you on the map a relative idea of where you are, which is kind of a nice safety net. The warm weather items that I have, I have my hat. This is a knitted thing that was given to me by a friend. I have no, I assume it's acrylic or something. It does stay warm when it's wet. And I was usually wearing this, but if I wasn't, what I would do strap is still tight from my pack being empty, having no food bag in it. 
But what I'd do if I wasn't wearing it is I would simply stuff it up at the top like so. And this hat weighs 3.6 ounces. Not the lightest thing in the world, but I love that I can I can pull it down over my ears. I can cover most of my face with it. Uh, sometimes if it's warmer at night, I've used it as a pillow as well, along with my clothes bag. Uh, I like it. I also take these military wool glove liners. They're 100% wool. They obviously don't cut wind, or and they're not waterproof. But so far, even down into the 20s, my hands stay... I All of me stays pretty warm if I'm moving. And even when wet, these things, they feel good. They're pretty warm. Uh, haven't had a problem with them. I was usually wearing them. Sometimes I didn't, and they'd get stuffed in a pocket or a side pouch or whatever, and they weigh one point ounce... 1.8 ounces for the pair. All right, the only other items that occasionally got stashed in my pack, the tripod on which the camera is sitting right now, also lived in the hip belt pocket, like I said, and that tripod is 2.1 ounces, and the camera that I'm using uh, came in at 3.9 ounces, which a lot of times it would actually live in my shorts pocket as well. Sometimes I'd stuff it in the side pouch, because these things are huge and hold all sorts of stuff. It's amazing. Moving on to what I was wearing. Uh, since they're the closest, I have these super high fashion leg warmer. That I actually, I don't know, Jen gave these to me when I did a another trek out into the snow. And she suggested I wear them upside down. And you can see they're still muddy. I need to wash them. Uh, and use them as sort of gaiters, which actually, they work really well for that. The, the loose ends just sort of hang over my shoes. Keeps a lot of the snow from coming in. They also make my legs a little bit warmer if I need it. Usually I don't have a problem with my legs getting cold. Other items that I wore, I have my green stained up old beat up hiking shorts. And these are Cherokee brand. I probably picked them up in a thrift store somewhere. I don't even know how long I've had them or where I got them. But they're synthetic blend with some cotton in them. Uh, I've still found that they dry super quickly. Uh, they're super lightweight, comfortable, nice and baggy and loose. Uh, no problems with those at all. And again, like I said, I did the cotton boxers this time, which is something that I won't do again uh, after the experience I had on this trip. Uh, next up for items worn is uh, the Icebreaker Merino Wool T-shirt. Uh, this was my base layer the whole time. It stayed on me. Never took it off. Love wool over synthetic because, well, the smell. I mean, it's a huge thing. Plus, I, it, it feels better against my skin. As far as wicking and drying, I haven't had a problem with it uh, at all. And it insulates reasonably well even after I've been sweating. I haven't... Yeah, it's been great. I will not go back to synthetic since I've moved on to wool. There's also the, uh, the Smart Wool 250 weight long sleeve t-shirt that I'm wearing now. Uh, I wore this the entire time over top of that t-shirt and it gave me just again another nice layer of insulation, kept my arms warm. Uh, great, great shirt. Uh, as far as the jacket, the insulation layer, all I had was this light fleece and this is a starter brand fleece from Walmart. It was on sale. It's super cheap. Uh, also has the nice orange motif to match everything else. Um, so I wore this the entire time I slept in it and everything else. And again, even into the 20s, with this plus the wind jacket, I have hiked into 20 degree temps without a problem. Um, wet conditions, everything else, it's been perfectly fine. Now, that being said, the, the effect of being cold when stopping, so when chilling around camp, setting stuff up, or when stopping for lunch or just a rest break, I do get cold when it's cold outside. I don't have currently a thick insulation layer, a down jacket, or anything that I take with me, and I suffer a little bit when I stop. Uh, all I have to do to remedy that is to start hiking again. Um, and I think, I think maybe some people put way too much emphasis on being constantly warm and cozy and comfortable. Uh, that's fine. Like, if that if that is how you want your trip to go and that keeps you happier and it's a better experience, then by all means, I mean, do what you got to do. I don't mind in 
retrospect at least being a little uncomfortable at times and again this isn't I call this a three and a half season setup because I will go out when it's 20 degrees or above regardless of other conditions uh, with this setup and I'm just fine the if I were going out below that especially down into the teens single digits stuff like that yes more layers would be involved uh, heavier pack weight more gear um, but I can go out several times during the winter as I have this year with just this setup as long as the temps again are 20s or above and be perfectly fine. I also don't mind being a little uncomfortable at times. As far as footwear, the uh, merino wool uh, smart wool socks that I showed you, they're the lightweight uh, hiking socks. That's all I wear. Um, I've accepted that my feet get wet. That's something, uh, if you watched the last video, Jen had the waterproof boots, which I was a little envious of starting out, and then by midday, the second day, her feet were soaked just from snow, finding their way through the Gore-Tex and finding their way through the top of the boots, and the difference was she was walking in puddles for the entire second half of the day, like there was just no way to get the things to dry out at all. Meanwhile, I was wearing my Lems Primal 2s, and this is all I wear actually every day, everywhere I go, all the time, hiking in winter, spring, summer, walking around town, playing, going to work, whatever. Uh, this is the only shoe that I wear. I love these things. They're super durable. Uh, I will do a full review on them in the near future. Uh, and these are super minimalist if you don't know about them. There's zero drop heel. There's no cushioning. There's no padding, no arch support. It's basically kind of like a well-vented sock with a rubber sole. And again, like I said in the video, my feet do get wet. They get soaking wet. But I found that even in the low temperatures I've been in with the wool socks and with these shoes, as long as I'm moving, my feet stay warm. They're wet, but they stay warm. And I can't say enough about them. They're wonderful. So all of everything added up. Uh, my pack fully loaded. That's with the spikes, me in the pack, and me not wearing the wind jacket, and everything I would possibly, potentially, have on this pack, including my gloves. Uh, that total weight is 16.08 pounds, or 265.61 ounces. Uh, this weight will go down as it gets warmer out, obviously. Uh, a more realistic idea of what I was carrying on this trip specifically, since I was wearing the spikes and the wind jacket and such most of the time. Uh, without the spikes, without the wind jacket, this pack comes in at 248.91 ounces, or 15.56 pounds. So I'm still in the lightweight category, even with my winter setup, and it works well. Not bad for me at all. One other thing I forgot to mention, my uh, compass slash thermometer here, it's this little Brunton thing. Uh, again, it's not the best compass in the world, it gives you a good general idea, and the thermometer is accurate enough. Uh, again, I know if it's in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s, I don't know the exact temperature, but that's fine. It gives me an idea of if I have to worry about frostbite or my filter freezing or whatever, and it finds north mostly. And this compass weighs 0.6 ounces. So there you have it. That's uh, my pack and all my gear that came with me on this trip. Uh, if you watch the video, you'll see some of the stuff that worked out really well, and again, a couple things that didn't. The using the space blanket as a ground sheet was not the best experience and I would have brought more dry layers especially socks and especially socks <laughs> basically uh, for this trip it would have made life a little better because everything of course ended up wetted out by the end um, but overall good system works well still constantly evolving pretty lightweight comfortable. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be having more content coming out, more full-length trip videos, which will get better. Uh, this is actually the second video I'm making ever, so 
I'm working on craft. I'm working on getting better shots and cutting out more of the filler. So hopefully stuff will get, be more concise and more exciting to watch as time goes on. I'm going to be putting out at least two videos a month, hopefully more. Uh, next up will probably be a gear review of the Lems Primal 2 shoes. And I think next week there's a good chance that I may be going back to Spruce Knob uh, just sort of to finish what I started, and that would be a solo trip. So you can look forward to that and some other pretty exciting places that I have lined up in the near future. Alright, thanks for watching.